All right, thanks, Raj. Um, so this actually follows on a good segue from the last talk, since um, I work for OpenNMS and we do everything they were talking about. So alerting, <laughs> threshold evaluation, notifications, all those sort of workflows we do with an OpenNMS. So today I'm going to talk to you about uh, just about how we manage to integrate OpenNMS with Grafana and sort of our, our journey through that. Um, so let's go. Uh, a bit about me. So I'm a uh, developer, love working with open source, and I've been uh, an employee of the OpenNMS group, which is the commercial entity behind OpenNMS uh, for the last year or so. Um, before that, I was a user in the community and, uh, and so on. So a little bit about OpenNMS. Um, if you're not aware, OpenNMS has been around since about the year 2000 or so, so it's a very mature product. Um, it's a Java-based application you typically deploy on-premise and supports a number of features out of the box. Uh, so it'll actually go ahead and you'll add your inventory um, and it'll go ahead and monitor that using, uh, it'll do, um, sorry, fault management and performance management as well. So for the fault, fault management perspective, it can actually go ahead and, and pull your devices. So every five minutes, go ahead and do a ping or something of that nature or something more complicated like synthetic transactions. So one of our clients um, recently is actually working on a monitor where they go ahead and click a forgot password link on a web page, which triggers off an email and they actually go ahead and verify that that email arrives in an inbox somewhere. And if anything along that check fails, they trigger a notification alert and so on. So uh, very, very flexible in what it can do in that space. Um, and in terms of um, performance management, you can go ahead and collect data, graph that, apply thresholds, uh, and send notifications, things like that, right? So in today's talk, we're going to focus more on the data collection aspect. Um, so OpenNMS works in pull mode. So you configure it with your devices, how to communicate with them, uh, how to parse the data, and it'll go ahead and speak to these devices over the various protocols, collect the data, and then store that in one of its available time series databases. So uh, historically, OpenNMS used RD tool for storing data. Most of you guys are probably familiar with that. It's been around for a very long time. So that's these static files on disk that it was stored into. And then uh, more recently, OpenNMS uh, supports a new time series database storage called Newts, uh, which is based on Cassandra. Um, so we now support both of those. And previously, um, in order to visualize this data, we had these things that we called KSC reports. So previously to Grafana, this is what users would look at um, when they go to the dashboard. Now these panels here are static images. Uh, they have to be configured in plain text and uh, fairly difficult to aggregate data from multiple nodes and different things together and to configure, right? Uh, so just to give you an idea, if we look at the graph on the bottom right over here, bits and out high speed, the graph definition looks something like this. So users that would want to go ahead and modify that graph had to open a VI or something, go in this file, right, muck around with it, refresh the page until they got what they wanted, right? So the user experience wasn't ideal. So in recognizing that, um, I started adding uh, the ability to extract the data out of OpenNMS via REST, right? So just start by giving it a way to access the data, right, and see if we can come up some, with some cool things to do with it afterwards. Um, so once that was there, I had a nice REST API going, and I was like, how do I figure out, how do I figure out this enough? How do I test it? So I heard of this cool thing called Grafana. So let's go ahead and try Grafana and uh, try to write a data source for Grafana that uses the REST API. So it all kind of fell together by accident, but it ended up working out great. And in about a couple hours, I had a custom data source for Grafana that uh, users were able to go in and pull data out of OpenNMS and get that into their dashboards, which was awesome. So since then, we've gone ahead and actually, uh, you know, finalized the Grafana plugin, put a bit more work into it, and then um, published that as an add-on. So users can now go ahead and download a uh, Grafana plugin package, install that alongside with their Grafana install. Um, it adds a new data source of type OpenNMS. They can point that to their OpenNMS system, and they get all the metrics out of OpenNMS and uh, can use all the powers of Grafana there, right? So since that's been deployed, um, some download statistics for you. We see we've got, you know, we're averaging about a 20, uh, 120 or so downloads per month on both Debian and Red Hat um, based distributions, which is great. So our users get to uh, leverage the power of Grafana and we're also bringing more of OpenNMS users to the Grafana community as a whole. So everybody wins here. Um, now, here's an example of a dashboard. Uh, 
presentation on Grafana wouldn't be complete without at least one screenshot. So um, here's an example of one of our customers. Uh, they're using this to monitor one of their, uh, actually several NetApp storage engines, right? So all this data is being collected and pulled out of OpenMS on these dashboards. So next slide is going to be a little video here uh, to show you how uh, the data source is used. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is go and select a node out of OpenNMS. Um, so we don't actually have a query language. Uh, so we just go ahead and use model windows to go search and find things and uh, go and grab the managed elements out of OpenNMS. So in this case, we're going to grab the uh, interface out octets on this particular node. Um, so we're going to take that metric, export that as out. So we have different types of queries. We have attributes that reference a particular metric. We have expressions. Uh, those can, we can apply mathematical formulas over those, right? Take the sine logarithm, uh, add different metrics up together. In this case, we're dividing um, the out speed by the available bandwidth, right? And getting a relative percentage. And the last thing that we have there are filters. So filters are very powerful. These will work over the whole data set. And what it'll do is it'll grab the data set from the previous uh, attribute and expression queries and it'll uh, pass that to um, some other engine, either in, in uh, Java or we also have an integration with R. So what that's doing now is that's actually fitting a trend line to the available data set, right? And what we just did there was change the order of the trend, so we made it be a polynomial curve instead of a line. So very flexible in terms of what you can do here. So it'll take the whole data set, pass that over to, um, to R, allow you to do any numerical computations, mangle the data set in some way, and pass it back. So all this work is done on the server side um, on OpenNMS, so very powerful stuff there. So that's the way the data source works today. Um, there's still some work to be done though, uh, in particular in supporting metric queries. Like I said, we don't have a full-fledged query language, so we've got to find a way to be able to users to get there, um, find out the available metrics and add those to templates without using the model dialogues like we showed earlier. Um, support for annotations, again, we don't have a query language there, so it's a little difficult to go ahead and pull those in. Um, and overall, increased awareness. So a lot of our user base isn't necessarily familiar um, that Grafana integration is available as an option. Um, so we've got to kind of get the word out there. And another thing that would help with that is actually integrating Grafana within our product. So uh, currently, users have to go install Grafana separately, install a data source, add open an MS, right, and access this other web UI to go and get these metrics. Uh, ideally, users would be able to go and open NMS and get that directly. Uh, otherwise, you know, people are using single sign-on, have to configure that on two web servers now, and it's a little bit more management overhead. Um, so I know in the switch in 2.0, Grafana decided that they'd rely on their uh, backend and go and no longer do the pure JavaScript-based approach. Um, so that'll be a little bit of a challenge if they, if they continue in that direction and get that fully integrated. Um, but as it stands now, we can use it as a separate uh, separate instance. So that's it for OpenMS. Um, now, if you want to learn more about OpenMS or uh, the plugin and our integration and how we did that, I'd be happy to talk afterwards. Or if not, you can look at our wiki. Uh, links to the source code, our data source, how we packaged everything there um, are available. Thank you. So we got about a minute and a half left here. If there's any questions from anyone in the crowd, yes. Um, the R integration. Yeah. That rely on the backend data source or is that separate? So the question was the R integration, whether that relied on the backend data source or was separate. Um, so the answer to that is it's part of our backend data source. So that so uh, the query to R is actually included in the request that's sent to the backend, and we'll see. Okay, you want to execute this filter, so we'll go ahead and collect all the data bundle that up, pass it to R for execution, and bring it back to the, to the user side. No? Any other questions? No? We're good? All right, thanks everyone.